dami. <laughs> It started life way back in 1949, simply known as a Land Rover. Became a Land Rover Defender in 1983, and then, after over two million had been made, closed its production line in January 2016. The Land Rover lovies needed boxes of tissues to soak up their tears as they mourned their loss. But in truth, this iconic vehicle that had made Britain proud was perfect on the farm, but slow, uncomfortable, and cramped on the road. My brother drove one to South Africa. I drove one as a young civil engineer, carving out the path of the M4, and it would go wherever I pointed it, climb any hill, and no one cared if you bounced it off the odd tree. Land Rovers bore such scars as badges of honor, but to be honest, I wouldn't want to have driven one on the roads for more than a dozen or so miles. So, will this new Defender be more my sort of thing? It certainly looks very stylish. I'm not sure any employer will be very happy if you bounce one of these off the trees. In fact, I've even been very worried about curbing these very fancy rims. So, have Land Rover gone soft, or will this new Defender defend its historic reputation? Blimey, it's got carpets and nice leather and a leather steering wheel and, hold on a minute, <laughs> electric seat adjustment. And maybe, maybe, <laughs> electric steering wheel adjustment. Are you sure I've got into the right car? This isn't like the Defender I remember at all. Hold on a minute, yes, I must be in a Defender because it says Defender here and it says Defender over there. But it's big and spacious and I can turn the steering wheel without my elbow hitting the door. Yep, this is definitely more my sort of Defender. You certainly wouldn't want to climb in here in your muddy wellies. But fear not, farmers and civil engineers the world over. Land Rover now do these hard top versions, which are very much for the workman. There's actually only front seats, there's a wall behind the two front seats, there's rubber mats, and behind is a huge van-like space, plastic line, so you're gonna hose it down after you've thrown your sheep in the back or whatever you want to do. Both versions come as either 90 or 110 models. That's the short wheelbase or the long wheelbase. Names that go right back to the first Defenders that were introduced in 1983. Back then, it actually referred to the wheelbase of the car, 90 inches between the front and rear wheels, or 110 inches. But uh, they're no longer exactly relevant because the cars have grown, and these cars should perhaps be called the 110 and the 120. But let's not spoil the story. So we're in a 110, the long wheelbase four-door version. And it really is a very nice place to be. There are still some carryovers from the old Defender. It's got a little look about it, the sort of slab-sided styling with that bluff rear end and a pretty steeply raked windscreen as well. Good old Defender style. But on the inside, you've got some exposed torque screw heads and a few grab handles here and there to get you into that rugged feel. But really, they're just token gestures because this car is all about luxury. It really is a very relaxing car to drive. I've got my nice round steering wheel with not too many buttons on it. Two nice dials, speed, revs, gears, centre section that illuminates with your sat-nav details. A screen that's not too big or carried away. And look, a nice little knurled knob so I can turn my temperatures up and down without having to punch and find the right spot. A few little bits of old tradition never go missing. Plenty of storage space, big box here. 
I've got cup holders underneath this bit and that bit then goes somewhere down there to be restowed. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure what this sort of hole bit is in the middle. But in fact, this whole centre section can be removed. You can then have a, a walkthrough model where you don't have this at all, or you can put a third and jump seat in here so you can have three people sitting in the front, which is quite fun for the kids. Although they'd have nowhere to put their cups then, would they? But hey-ho. Because you can actually have two seats right in the back as well. So you could have a seven-seater, a five-seater, a three-seater, all sorts of seats to be chosen. You then got to go to your specs. As usual, there's the S, the SE. This is an SE version, which has a few more LED lighting options ahead of the S. Then there's the HSC and the top of the range X. Say so you've chosen your wheelbase and your seats and your trim, and then you've got to choose your engine. And there are three diesel engines, 200 horsepower, 250, 300, all mild hybrids, and then two petrols, 300 or 400 horsepower. So really, this is an amazing car to spec with so many different variations to be chosen from. Now, I'm not exactly known as a diesel lover. I'm a pure petrol head because I love engines that rev high and the power goes up and up as the rev climbs. But diesels, you know, I feel sorry for them at the moment because they've all been tarred with this diesel gate brush. Whereas in fact, since Euro 6 came out, they're some of the cleanest engines on the market. They still offer that low down torque so you don't have to keep changing gear. And also, of course, you know, great range, good economy. So it's still a good choice as long as you can handle the dirty looks you get nowadays. Diesel. I can't believe I'm defending diesels. <laughs> it's turned, the whole clock's gone upside down. Me, promoting diesels. Whatever next. This is only the 250 horsepower diesel version, but there's plenty of punch and torque. The steering is very positive. Ride quality, excellent. It's air suspension with adaptive damping takes on these bumpy roads with calm precision. There's a little bit of body roll, but as long as the chassis turns in, I like that. It makes me feel that we're, we're motoring a bit. This is nothing like the Defender of old. This is the enjoyable family SUV. Sorry, Land Rover 4x4, which I'm sure is going to appeal to a lot of people. Prices for the Defenders, both passenger versions and hardtop, begin at just over £40,000. But as the range rises, you could spec a Defender X up to a £100,000 price tag, for which you could get a very smart Range Rover Vogue. Of course, like every press fleet car, this 250 horsepower diesel 110 does have a few extras, including a £1,500 panoramic roof, £1,500 for those snazzy 20-inch rims, and, interestingly, a £1,500 off-road pack which includes winter tyres, or sort of semi-off-road tyres. Because we all know that uh, some of those snazzy road tyres put on off-road vehicles aren't very good off-road. But I'm sure Land Rover don't want any of us to be seen stuck in the mud in one of their new Defenders. Not that I, for one moment, think it could ever be stuck in the mud. But I suppose we ought to find out. Right, this looks like the sort of place we need. But first of all, I've got to uh, raise up my air suspension, lift up in the air to make it as high as possible. Then I think we'll just pop it as neutral in order to engage low ratio. And now we're ready to go. Onwards, ever onwards. Let's start with a bit of a splash. Oh, and a tree. Oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> if you go down to the woods today, sure of a big surprise, and it's the big surprise I'm worried about. Right, now, 
visibility gets a bit difficult when you're climbing up hills. So I've actually got these camera views. I press for camera here, and now look, I can see where I'm going, but also this is the edges, so just see where exactly where my wheels are planted. I'm a bit worried. Oh, a bit worried. <laughs> the camera doesn't show how steep that is. Oh, I'm glad I got this hill descent. Feet are full of pedals, feet are full of pedals. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Now, the good thing is that when you're in low, it automatically engages this hill descent. And the hill descent will come into operation when it gets to a certain angle of steepness and automatically all your feet off do all the braking downhill for you. Hill descent. Brilliant. Oh, this isn't the hill though. Oh, it's a bit of longer bit of water. Oh, what is it? Bow wave. Do I need a bow wave? Is this three feet? Oh, I don't know how deep is three feet. We go to wade sensing because I've no idea whether this puddle ahead of me is up to my two foot nine inch maximum or not. It's coming up. Ah, we're good, we're good. We've still got another one foot easy. Oh, 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 oh. I'm worried about my fancy rims. I don't want to get my rims embedded in the side. Oh, blimey. No, oh, come on, it'll go anywhere. Go anywhere. What was I worried about? So yes, the Defender is still the king off-road. And now it's taking on the challenge of some of the kings on the road as well. And lower suspension. And relax. Oh, my bling rims still look good. The question is, I mean, do I want the 90 or the 110? Do I want three seats or five seats?